Good day, good day, everybody. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, now that we've added multiple lasers, um, it's time to uh, work on spawning some enemies. So the good news is that this follows kind of similar uh, similar approach to what we did for making all these lasers, which is cool. Uh, and uh, we're not going to get into collision detection today. That'll be next. At the end of this video, though, We'll make things a little more interesting for the enemies. Uh, instead of just having them go at a steady speed, we'll implement a variable speed. So that'll be at the end. So let's start uh, baby steps. Uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, start uh, spawning some drones. Um, so let's go to our top here where we have our constants. Uh, I want to follow kind of a similar pattern to what I'm doing with the laser speed, etc. We also want to implement a cooldown. Uh, so let's uh, let's make some let's make some variables here. So our drone speed, uh, like our laser speed, will be a float. And uh, you know, after playing it around for a little bit, I came up with a 700. Uh, again, you can tweak all these, of course, uh, to suit your your preferences. Uh, have drone um, spawn cooldown, cooldown timer, just like with our lasers. That's a float. And this this cooldown timer, I'll just make it a 700 as well. Uh, num of drones, and this will be we'll we'll do 10. So that just means that you know the number of our drones rendered at any given time on the screen, we can have a maximum of 10 for now. Later on, of course, you can try more. If uh, you know that could be like if the level increases or whatever, and you just want to make it harder, we can make the drones move faster. Uh, do more drones, that sort of thing. Uh, on our game struct, just like what we do with our lasers, we'll need uh, similar things here. But with the laser, we render when we fire, when we hit a key, but the drones, they're just going to be um, consistently rendered. So let's add our drone texture. We will need that so that we know we have an image to render. We'll make our drones num of drones, uh, a fixed array, just like with our lasers. And we'll have to do our drone spawn uh, cooldown. And this will be a float. Now I can even jump down to our timers. Where are we? No, down at the bottom. There we go. I can do that right away because that's easy. We know we will be fixing our timer here. Spawn cooldown. I'll uh, we'll do drone speed. And you know, it just occurred to me that this is the same as our get delta motion uh, laser speed. That is exactly the same. So let's just use it. Drone speed. There we go. So we're decrementing our cooldown. Uh, now let's let's actually render our or let's create our drones. So we'll follow pretty much what we're doing here with our laser. I'll just copy that. We have our drone texture, uh, and we will need to put the drone image, of course, in our assets. So you can download that on the repo. And you put it into into your your assets folder, and then it will be available to you. So I'm going to do that right now, and you can look at this cool screen while I do that. I always forget to do this before a video, but that's okay. Okay, I'm back. I did put the the file in my assets folder, and I believe it's drone one. Let's see. There we go. That's what it looks like, that green guy right there. And notice he's facing to the left because they will be coming from the right. Okay. So we load that. Uh, we'll call that our drone texture. We want to make sure it isn't nil. And we'll change this to drone width, drone height. We want to query that texture to get our height and our width. And we'll save our drone texture because, of course, every time we render it, we need to reference that texture. 
we'll save that on our game struct. Uh, so let's, uh, nope, I don't want that. We want to save that here just like we have our laser texture. Yeah, we have our drone texture right there. I already did that, great. There we go. So our drone texture, and we'll go through our num of drones. And same deal, we have to less one, just so that we don't get one more than what we actually want. We have our destination. Our SDL rect will be, so the drones will be off screen as well. And we have our drone width and our drone height. And I can't quite remember how much I had to reduce that size. So let's see here. I'm just checking my notes, folks, to make sure that I don't make it too large. Okay, so it looks like I had to reduce it by five. There we go. And... Now the thing, uh, we won't uh, do it window width off to the right actually, uh, we need to make sure that this is way off to the left. So it's come from the right, it's gone off to the left, it's off screen behind our player, and uh, that's when we will re-render it. And uh, let me see, so I'll just make this just, just the drone width off. And we'll put this in our drones array. We get our index just like before, create our entity and our destination. Now in the last video, uh, we I talked about how I moved away from using health to decide whether or not I need to render something. And this is where it started to bite me in the butt and I change it later on. Uh, but we did remove health from the entity struct. So if you go up to entity, I removed the health. Didn't need it anymore. Uh, but again, I will add that in later on. Learn from my mistakes. Okay, so we've got our our entities, our drones created. Now, how do we actually render them? Well, let's go up to our update and render section, way up here. And we're not shooting them yet. So I'm gonna handle this after the lasers. Let's go, after we render our lasers, let's do our drones right here. Um, we have to iterate through them, of course, uh, just like we do with our lasers for drone in game drones. And uh, the first thing we want to check is if we should be rendering a new drone. So before with lasers, we were checking if we were firing as well. We don't need to do that in this case. We're just going to continually spawn them. Uh, so if the drone, uh, the destination X is less than zero, so that means it's way off screen to the left, uh, actually less than or equal to zero, why not? Uh, and uh, the cooldown timer. So just like we checked our cooldown timer up here for the laser, we will do the same here with the drones. Here we go. And the game, uh, let's see, what did I write that? Drone spawn cooldown is greater than zero. So if it is not greater than zero, that means it's zero or less. The, the, the timer has run down. Uh, then we want to respawn. So respawning is simply resetting its value. So it's not off to the left, but it's over on the right again. Just set it right up to the edge of the window. Uh, this X will correspond to the top left corner of the sprite. So if it's window width, that means the top left corner will be right against the right edge and we won't see it. It'll, it'll appear as if it's coming from just outside the window and the drone dust Y. Now this, uh, we're gonna do something new here. I don't want them obviously to all come from the same spot along the Y axis. I want to make this random. Uh, now how do we do this? Well, we've got uh, a library from uh, Odin that will help us do that. And if I remember right, actually I wonder, have to look that up again because I can't quite remember what it was. Let me see. I think it was Math Rand, but I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Yeah, it was Math Rand. So we'll import that here. Where are 
we? There we go. So I will use uh, Odin's Rand. So we just imported math slash Rand. That means I have access now to this Rand library. And uh, it gives us a function called float32. Why 32? Because the X and the Y are I32s. So we want to end up with a 32-bit number. And it's very simple. You just pass in a range. Um, so we'll range from 120, which is, uh, which would be we're along the y-axis, mind you. So I don't want to spawn directly at the top or directly at the bottom. So I did. Uh, I gave us a buffer of 120 pixels on the top and the bottom. You can play around with it and uh, choose what you like. And then we just cast it to an i32, which is needed for the the y field. And once that's done, we just respawned the drone, so we need to reset our timer. There, we reset our timer. And remember, we're already decrementing it down here below. I didn't want to forget that. Now, after we've done that, uh, we want to move our drones that are active and on the screen. So we'll just get our, our movement. I'll just call it steps. This has to be an I-32, and again, we use get delta motion, and we use our drone speed this time. Now remember, I'm using a set speed right now, so all drones will be moving at the same time, but uh, in the, the end of the video there, we'll implement, implement a, a variable speed, which would be kind of cool. Makes things a little more interesting. So that means our uh, destination X will now move to the left, so we're we're removing we're uh, subtracting these steps we're moving towards the left and if after all of that the movement um, keeps the drone on the screen so if the drone destination x is still greater than zero then we should render it render copy so we pass in uh, our renderer and of course we need our drone texture Do not underestimate how difficult it is to type when you're filming. And uh, nil, because review from before, this is our source. We're using the entire sprite, not a section of the sprite. So that means uh, this source argument is nil rather than passing in another uh, SDL rect. And then we pass in a reference to our drone destination rect right there. And that should render it. Now I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. That should do it. Let's try compiling and see see how we do. Run. Oh, I just have a minor syntax error. Probably forgot some. There we go. Forgot a comma. There we go. So now we have our drones coming, and they're all the same speed. Random y values, which is good, uh, but they're all the same speed. So that's a little boring. And of course, we're not doing any collision detection yet, so we can't actually destroy them. So let's make this a little more interesting. Let's do some random random speeds. Uh, to do this, we can use that random uh, function again. Uh, but we need to, instead of determining how many steps, okay, let's find that again. Instead of determining how many steps we move just by calling get delta motion on a set speed, like drone speed, we should instead store the, the delta that we want for every individual drone on the entity struct itself. So this means that we have to um, edit this a little bit. And we'll add a dx for delta x. And this will be a float, because we want to move in as small of increments as possible. And a delta y, just like that. And of course, that means for our player and our lasers and also our drones, we're going to have to uh, set these values. We don't have to use them all the time. Uh, we'll ignore them for pretty much all of them except for the drones, but we'll set them never, nevertheless. We'll just get used to using them because maybe later on we'll, we'll do some things with the lasers to change the speed, for example. So here, when we're creating our laser entity, for example, we'll do our dx, our delta x, would be uh, our laser speed. There we go. And our delta y will also be our laser speed. And we have to do the same for our player. So dx uh, player speed. There we go. And then to do our random speeds for our drones, 
let's do it right here after our uh, texture is created um, and no we want to do this within our loop because it'll be different for every every one won't it so we'll set our max speed which will be a drone speed times let's say uh, 1.5 or 1.2 uh, min so you can play around with these numbers of course drone speed times uh, 0 0.5 so the lowest the slowest that a drone will be able to go is half of our stated drone speed the fastest will be another 20 percent on top of on top of that uh, and then we come up with our random speed so the random speed we want to use uh, we'll use our rand again but this time uh, because we're using f64s we can use float uh, 64 uh, range again we just pass in our min and our max and we can set that right down here so our dx equals our random speed here oops uh, let's set it there speed there we go and our dy is the same random speed now we're not moving up and down yet but maybe later on we'll add that uh, let's see. So now we have to change how our entities actually move uh, because we want to reference the dx and the dy. Uh, we don't want to um, ignore that because we've said it. And you know, later on you might just forget, and uh, then we will uh, we'll have problems. We'll wonder why we're having we're not moving the way we we expected. So we'll do a delta motion x and a delta motion y. This one will be the game player dx uh, and a dy instead of just putting in the, the speed right there. And so for our X movement, we'll use delta motion X. Uh, and for our Y movement, of course, we'll do our Y. So that's updated, that's easy, no problem. For lasers, uh, let's see, where are we calculating? We just have to look where we're using get delta motion. Uh, instead of uh, doing laser speed here, we'll do uh, laser uh, dx that's the one uh, let's see did i get that right yeah because our lasers are just moving in one direction they're not uh they're not moving up and down so we just use our dx speed right there and then for drones instead of using drone speed right there do our drone uh dx just like we did with our lasers and that way, uh, yeah, the speeds will be variable. It'll be different for every drone. So let's uh, recompile. Where did I do that? I made a mistake here. Oh, I have an L here. That's why I shortened it. Okay, so now here we got a couple slow ones. There's one that's moving slightly faster. You see it's catching up to the others. Still fairly steady. Maybe not as random as I would like, but not bad. So you can play around with the random function too, just to see if you can, you know, introduce a little more variety there. But otherwise, that's not too bad. Let's try that again. Let's recompile and see if we come up with something different. So you can play around with the ranges. So we had like a 1.2 range, for example. So let's maybe a 1. Point, what did I try? I tried to do 1.5 here. There we go. Maybe that'll give us a little more variety. There we go. Some super fast ones some slow ones some medium ones here we go so that just adds some more variety makes things a little more interesting i'm going to change that back to 1.2 though because that's what i have online for y'all so let me know if you have any questions about that just put them down in the comments below and uh, thanks for watching cheers